G'day and welcome to today's MUM36 rebuild video where we look to show you how to remove fiberglass osmosis from your boat for less than 100 pounds. We reduced the moisture content in our hull by up to 70% in parts, proving that you don't need to spend thousands of pounds on expensive professional treatments. Fiberglass and gel coat is actually a porous substance. So as your boat sits in the water, moisture can be pulled in to the core of your hull when left for extended periods of time. If enough moisture makes its way into the hull, it can actually start to react with the chemicals left over as the fiberglass cured. If there is enough leftover chemical residue to react with the moisture, it can actually form pressure bubbles within the core that if large enough and left untreated, can manifest itself as blisters on the external hull of your boat. In the most extreme cases, you can end up with more blisters than unaffected hull, as in the example I'm about to show. So the next question that needs to be answered is, how do you know you've got moisture buildup before it's too late? And for this, you'll need a moisture meter. These devices send an electrical current through the surface that you are measuring. When moisture is present, the electricity flows more easily. Conversely, as it becomes drier, it will resist the electrical flow. The resistance is measured in ohms and then converted into a reading expressed as a percentage moisture content. To demonstrate how this works, we've got two identical pieces of wood. One has been dried while the other has been soaked in water for 24 hours. The dry piece of wood barely measures any moisture content with less than two or three percent. While the piece of wood that has been soaked in the water is off the scale, giving the maximum reading. The final bit of science that we need to understand before building our hot pack is looking at the boiling point of water and the effects of pressure on this number. Everyone knows that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius under normal pressure. What not a lot of people understand is that water boils at lower temperatures under pressure. If you can get a little over 29 bars of HT vacuum, you can actually get water to boil at zero degree. So now we knew we had a problem, the challenge became, how do we build a hot vac for less than 100 pounds. The most expensive component was going to be the vacuum pump. They retailed at over 350 pounds new, and without really knowing whether it was gonna work, we didn't wanna spend that amount of money. It was at this point we remember that my father-in-law actually used to run a dairy farm. And we, after a quick phone call, we confirmed that his vacuum pump was still sitting in the milking shed, unused for over 10 years. So, a quick trip, from Strangford Lock, out west to Fremantle, to source our vacuum pump. After a quick service, the vacuum pump was up and running. It was now time to see how much HG vacuum pressure we could create once we sealed the unit to the bottom of the boat. With our vacuum pump up and running, we could manage a little bit over 26 HG vacuum pressure. This would mean we would need to get the core of the boat heated up to a little bit over 40 degrees Celsius if the water was going to boil, turn into a gas, and then be removed from the hull. With our vacuum pump working away, let's take a closer look at the additional pieces of equipment that we used on the hull of the boat to create the vacuum seal and the temperature required to boil the moisture inside the boat. The first layer was an electric blanket that we ran at full temperature to heat up the core of the boat. The blanket is then covered by a layer of black heat resistant rubber. You can however just see the power cord sticking out next to the vacuum exit point. Next we inserted a thermostat so we could measure the core temperature of the hull to ensure we were getting hot enough to boil the water. 
Finally, we needed to create a seal to ensure that the vacuum pump could create the pressure needed. For this, we just used some heavy duty gaffer tape to seal around the edges of the rubber. The hole temperature up and the vacuum pump sucking away, the moisture in the boat turned to gas and was sucked out through the green exit pipe, effectively lowering the moisture content within the core of the hull. So that brings us to the end of today's MUM36 rebuild episode, where we showed you how we reduced the moisture content in our hull for less than 100 pounds. Ultimately, the cold Northern Irish winter and a vacuum pump that was a little bit past its prime prevented us from being 100% successful, but we did get significant reductions. I'm sure with a newer pump and warmer weather conditions, you could really make a big impact on your hull without getting professional help. If you like today's video, be sure to subscribe to our channel to get future updates as we continue our MUM36 rebuild.